Krona, who will speak about safety of intended functionality. Thank you very much, and I'm delighted to be here, and it's a lot of common faces. Now I skip what I said before when we prepare the presentation. <laughs> Okay, so uh, senility, what is that? Uh, senility is formed by Veoneer or previously Autoleave and Volvo Cars Corporation. Basically, Volvo Cars had a lot of uh, software and knowledge about ADAS and AD that they said, hello, take care of it and develop it and sell it. And Veoneer says, well, we can probably send some sensors uh, in integrating also your software. And that formed senility one year ago. So, we really like to uh, emphasize that we are addressing uh, ADAS and AD, and we take all these IPs that is, is there. A little more, then we skip it. Okay, so this is the agendas. I would like to uh, just go through some short terminology definitions, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, the real SOTIF, the SOTIF, what is that standard? And also the trolley problem, because I think it's really, it really ties very closely to what we are going to discuss and are discussing within the, in the community. Operational capability, what is that? Tactical decision. What is an ODD assurance? We will come to that later. Ensuring no object, I think this is maybe the most crucial for us. And we can see this picture. Everyone has probably seen it from the Uber accident, which unfortunately killed Hertzberg. And also uh, enforcing fail-safes, what is that? We will talk a little about that. And also what is an ASIL classified performance? Is that possible with the sensors even? So let's see where we will end up. In the, uh, in the past, of course, we had a lot of passive safety. That was going to protect the driver and those that uh, travel with it's even better, because I didn't shave this morning. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Passive safety, it is really the airbags. We try to save a lot of lives. And then we came to aid us. We said that, hey, we can actually do some to assist the driver. And that is some uh, automatic emergency braking. We can also uh, give you some hints where you should, what distance you should keep to the ahead or target vehicles through the um, ACC, Adaptive Cruise Control. So we see an increasing automation coming. But now we are getting, really, we, we don't want to be in critical situation. We would like to have a safe situation to begin with. And this is what the HAD, or autonomous driving, is about. That we do tactical safety, not only active safety. So tactical safety is, to, uh, of course, to avoid coming into a situation where uh, harm could uh, come. And just a little about the SAE levels. I think most of you are, uh, are really aware of them. But just to say that the ADAS, let's say that the level one and two, that is ADAS. This is uh, the paradigm that we have worked with for 20 years. And it started with Delphi providing some functionality to Volvo. And later on, you have seen and heard about the Uran cap results that XC90 had, for example, where they really performed perfectly. But now it's really going to, to the AD, to, to HAD. And it's a paradigm shift. And we will talk a little about why we think it is, why it's not so easy to reuse what has been done for the ADAS, and that we have to think in a completely new way. And also a little about the, the differences in the paradigm ADAS. It is that for HAD, we say that the perception is really safety critical. The decisions are really uh, safety critical and obviously also the activa uh, activation. But for ADAS, for some, for most actually, uh, behavior, it's really the driver that is in control. Uh, but there are some exceptions, of course, that we do have the autonomous emergency brake. That can actually act and brake quite a lot. And then someone can hit you from behind. So obviously this is quite tricky for the driver to handle. But it's possible if you press the, the throttle, you should go. The, the brake should be removed. So this is the situation we are uh, looking into. So. An operational design domain, ODD, is something that is increasingly used within the uh, 
community. Previously, some may have heard about the real world use profile because you and Cap used that. They said, well, you have a car in front of you and you should be able to detect it and brake and not hit it. That was that ROWAP. And then we had the vulnerable road user coming out from behind a car. That was an ROWAP. But now we, we define it as an operational design domain, which means that we specify for a specific use. And it can be many, many, many uses that we, well, that we have. For example, we can have the... Um, High, highway pilot, that we define that where, when the, the sun is from behind, there is uh, this amount of traffic. Uh, it's it's uh, this kind of good lanes that we have defined, and we have very good GPS and things. So we can define that under these circumstances, we may be allowed to go 110 or something like that. So we define exactly what our scope is. Of course, a safe self-drive car that is saying to be a level five, we think it's impossible because then it means that you need to specify an ODD that is everything. So the start is really that we, we look into a limited approach and we will show you why we think this is the only way. Today we see cars sent out and having a safety driver and they try to validate things around doing the full ODD. And this is tricky to some extent. And also, operational capability is something that we really need to understand. We need to know what is the status of our sensors. We need to understand what is the status of, of the, the road, the environment, at all time. Because this will be based in order for us to say, what ODD can I support? What is my operational capability? Obviously here, maybe some detection could say that it's a road, but it's, it's both less friction, but it's also a lot of markings are gone, and there is a snow that is blurring the image. So obviously we would say that the operational capability is very low from the sensor point of view. So maybe it's five kilometers an hour, that is the ODD that you can allow. And also we have the, the weather conditions such as sun glare. We know that it's going to lower the confidence on especially uh, cameras, but also lighters are affected by this. So this means that if we have sun glare, we need to lower the ODD, pull back our uh, offer to the, the, to the car. And also we have the traffic situations. We can't really take care of all traffic situations. We know that, so we specify something that we think is specifiable. And this is also a little about the background to so TIFF, which we are going to talk about shortly. And also tactical decisions is something that I would like to introduce here. So if you have set up an operational capability, it means nothing if, if it doesn't have margins for you to react. Like when something happens, that should be really planned for. So it means that if the sun comes, we already have margins to take care of the sun glare. So we have already adjusted our, our margins. So it means that we shouldn't drive like this close to the, the car, of course, because if it breaks, we bump into it. So tactical decisions are really there for us to keep a safe distance, to avoid things that can go wrong, for example, we, we avoid going close to cars that are parked because we know that a vulnerable road user can jump out and we don't want that to happen. Lower speed, drive to the shoulder are uh, examples of these tactical decisions. Uh, what do we look at? What, what is the system that we are trying to do design? Obviously, we have a lot of perception, a lot of sensors that are going to have different modalities, that is, uh, abilities to detect uh, longitudinal or lateral uh, distances. They can um, say that this is this type and things like that. And depending on the weather and other circumstances, it can be worse or better in detecting that. And we say that we report surroundings, but we also report confidence on these uh, objects. 
let me say. Uh, for AD, we put them into an occupancy grid, which be basically is that we put them on a longitudinal dot and also laterally. So we know that in this uh, coordinate, we do have an object of this type with this confidence, for example. And then, obviously, we need to be very rigid here for our decision making, looking at what has been detected by, by the sensors. It means that we need to have a free space. Is it a free space that we can drive, or is it obvious everywhere? How sure are we on that? And given this, we do have the planned path. But also from here, from the vehicle control, we do get the capabilities. We saw that earlier in an image. For example, we don't have good road friction, so we can't brake as good as we should. So all this is in real time calculated. <laughs> so this can be a simple uh, abstraction of our system. So for us, we have a safety goal, but this is for an ODD, basically. We say that we have a safety goal for a highway pilot, given this and this specifics. And then we have a safety case on having these tactical decisions to take us or have us within operational capability. And we see that it's very complex, of course, but because we need to cooperate with many other systems and their specifications, vehicle control unit, power steering, primary brake, secondary brake. So it, it's a huge and complex problem for us to solve. And Senuti, we work then with the OEM, because we can work with any OEM, given that the Vionier Autoliv has a project with them so far. Especially, but uh, specifically for Volvo, we can work without Vionier, that said. Mm. And how could you say that the architecture really looks like? Yes, yeah, so Senuti, we need to really address to the left here. But we have, from the left, several sensors. We have some object fusion. We have sensor fusion where we select targets. We have the features. And then we de decide how to do it. And then we need to cooperate with the car. So we see that we have a lot of requirements that we need to put on the steering, propulsion, braking, etc. So maybe this could be Bosch, Conti, whoever, that needs to integrate software with us. Because Senuity will do the functional architecture, but also together with the different elements here, the, the, the logical architecture. So what is going to happen when, when we do something wrong here? I think this is a, is a good picture. So basically, we know that when something goes wrong in our architecture, it's depending on the duration of the fault and how big the fault is, something will happen. We can take the, the torque or the steering as an example. So we say that a, a limited steering bias for a very short time, it will always be QM. We do like this with the car. Nothing bad happened. But depending on how this grows, either in size of the error or the time, we do get a behavior of the car that is really bad that we need to detect. So this puts a lot of time constraints on our design, because if we are here, we do have the ASIL D to, to manage. And we get a little more time to detect it, but we should detect it ASAP, of course. And we see then also something, and this is getting closer to so TIFF then, because Previously, when we addressed ISO 2626262, we said that it's E is systems with its software that should be having a reasonable low uh, defect rate or failure rate. But the electronics is fairly mature. You can show 10 to the minus 8, 10 to the minus 9 systems, basically. It's possible. Software is also maturing. We know that it's used in space shuttles. It's, it's used by aircraft, so it can also be done. But for automotive industry, it's still maturing. Sensor performance, this is just starting to de be developed, really, to, to take care of HAD or highly autonomous driving. And also for, for the new NHTSA or URAN cap that is coming, better performance is really needed. And we see that it's a little shift. What should you f focus on? Should you have cheap sensors and have many of them? Can, is that possible to use? Well, we are still iterating. Uh, 
And also, we see that the most contributing here for H HAD, for example, are the, the corner cases that are hard to find, hard to detect. So does it really make sense to, to have ISO 262 that traditionally, at least, was only, were only addressing the upper two? This was something that was discussed within the, uh, the working group that are behind the ISO 262. So again, what, what did we have to, to do? What did we have to ensure within uh, our thinking here? So the perception again, of course the objects needed to be there. We needed to know what type it was and also have a confidence. So the important thing for us was that don't be overconfident. Don't state something you can't really ensure. We don't care. Just don't be overconfident. Just don't say it's a free space. Say that, I don't know. Okay, good. It's fine. So this is very important for us. So, and also the next, the decision making. Drive within your limits. So usually say that you should never drink and drive, right? because we know that a lot of accidents and fatal accidents are happening due to that. But the, the first problem that happens when you're drinking is not yet that you actually become a worse driver. It's because you, you actually think you are a better driver. Yeah, so you take more risks. And this is what we like to hear. We uh, like to address here. We don't want to think that we are better. So we don't want to have a tipsy system or Definitely no, not an obliviative system that is drunk, right? Because then the sensors start to, to fail. And also, we need to look uh, into the strategy, how we are going to come to a safe stop. Now we're looking into HAD. This is partially ADAS and HAD presentation, so you have to bear with me a little. But let's say that we have an 80 car out there. So we say that normal operation within the ODD, we do a lot of tactical decisions. And depending on that, we lose some confidence, we lose some capabilities. We can see this as some kind of fault, actually. The sensors are faulty, or they have less performance, if you can measure that. This means that if it's very bad, we are standing still with the car. But if we are driving 110, it's of course going to be a gradual decrease of performance. So the first thing that we need to do when the tactical decisions look like we are not going to be able to handle it, we can try to have a handover to the driver. And this is also very critical. It can happen quite a lot, but it's not good for us. So selling an ODD that is going to give back the responsibility to the driver every time you drive it, it's not going to be very good. And of course, next we can have a degraded and driving mode because you didn't take over. So you can actually lower the speed, but you can't do, you don't need to do more. And also in the end, I mean, based on the history of the tracks that you know, because you have now very low confidence on the sensors, you say that we make a safe stop at some specific area close by. Or even this, that we can say that we have a blind safe stop. So for example, we could, of course, just go to the shoulder, because we know at each time where are the objects. So the second or the millisecond you get blind, you know that there is a track with free space to the shoulder. But if it's not, it's going to be a break. So this is what we also need to think of when we design our semi-active systems like the safety system and data systems and HAD. Yeah, so verification and validation strategy. Of course, it's huge validation and verification strategy. We know that we, of course, need to verify each sensor for all the weather types, for all scenarios. But we also need to, of course, validate the sensors and the sensor fusion. Because if we change a sensor, we also obviously need to look does the sense of fusion change? Do we have some regression there? So we need to collect a lot of mi miles. And also, for, of course, for the decision making. So this is a little house in to looks at the testing. And it's, it's of course, done with the, the actual customer and uh, the bigger mirror that we set up. So what are the goals for us, then? 
So this tries to show a little about the, the failure rates that we, we see in, in the industry today. So we see that the airline fatalities global per person is very low. And we know that the FAA has said at least lower than 10 to the minus 9. It's 10 to the minus 10, etc. And then if we look, I even get some ache in my neck when I try to look at it. It's, it's so high up, right? So we have two companies. I won't tell you who they are, but they are actually reporting, of course, all the interactions that they have, have had from the safety driver. So we see that the, the failure rate, because they go in the safety driver when it's about to be. We don't say that it is, is about to be a fatal accident. But you see that it's way above where we really need to be. Whoops. And it was gone. I made some animation. Yeah, so what I wanted to sell, maybe, I, oh, it's later on. But you see that this is what we need to do. So if you have, you're starting up from an ODD that is top, and then you try to, to really go down, you will see how many years it will actually take until you are down to some reasonable level of accidents. And this is also something that we need to uh, address and think about. Do we want to have cars out there where you suddenly, when it's 100,000 cars or 1 million cars, actually reporting back too many near crashes, for example? So obviously, this is not possible. So now we are into the SOTIF. So basically, what I've said now is based on the discussion that we had a few years ago within the, the ISO 262662. So we ob observed, Stefan and I were working on the, on the XC90, and we saw there is a lot of difficulties in saying that a per, uh, sensor, what the, it can do and when it can, what it cannot. It actually could produce ghosts. And it was, of course, not so easy to apply ISO 262, which only says that the, the hardware metrics or you should apply these good uh, tools and you should have a good architecture. But it was hard to really put a figure on the likelihood of not detecting a specific case. We can always say that, well, can we detect a square like this in 10 meters? Yes, we can, and then we can move it around. But it was hard to put figures, especially to reach these 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 7 failures per time. And we also saw that there, it was not easy for us to handle weather and surrounding in a good way. So Mobileye, that made the camera, they were discussing how can we very good decide when it's raining, when it's water spray. Because we knew that water spray from a truck would uh, deteriorate the sense of performance and could cause a lot of ghosts. How could we say that when it's rain and when it's not? We needed to, that to be uh, uh, of high integ uh, integrity. And also about this rare traffic situation that you saw some pictures of. It's not so easy to, to, uh, to find these. But when a million cars are out driving, they will find it. And they will find it quite a lot. And also, I have added some extra, of course, the mach machine learning is another third step that is, of course, into this. And it's used by many, especially for defining what type of the object we see. Because we would like to, to break for a kid, but maybe not for a bag. <coughs> Something like that. It's the can, the Coke can problem. So in 2013, uh, ISO 262 Group uh, actually decided we are going to go for the SOTIF standard. And I was in, in, in these first meetings. Uh, we said this is, we would like to have some me methodology, really, how we can uh, stamp sensors and how we should work with it. But then it, it changed the scope along with a lot of people coming in, and they were coming from other areas. Etc. So the SOTIF that was once started is not what was voted on, and we will talk about what has been voted on shortly. And this SOTIF initiative was primarily for ADAS. It's not for HAD, although in the planning it says that we would like to address this later on. But now we also know that there's a paradigm shift, and it has been a lot of meetings now uh, in parallel with this SOTIF especially with the Germans, that we, we need uh, a better way of handling uh, the stuff than SOTIF. So first, some people came and said that, well, I have a SOTIF problem. 
I have a car that is coming up the hill. I don't know if there is a car because of this angle. Is that a SOTIF problem? Well, yeah, we put that in. It should be, it should be there, so we need to analyze it. Thank you to Wilhard von Wendorf. Um, but this was also taken from the first um, definitions within the standardization. So we know that systems rely on the environment sensor. They can be safety violations, safety goal violations. We knew that. So we needed a way to do it. So, so TIFF addressed performance limitations due to incompleteness of the environment model was one that said that. Other says, performance limitations as part of the nominal performance and what is unintended behavior with respect to design intent. And this is, this so TIFF standard has been out People have been voting on it, and uh, a lot of uh, comments has been received, uh, which moves us to uh, the next stages, but we will wait a little to that. But the next thing that also came into the SOTIF is, really, how do we take care of this when weather changes? For example, two. This is gray day in Gothenburg, or whatever, and then it comes the snow. What will happen? We needed to understand that, and this is what the... Uh, so TIFF standard will help us with. And the third example is just, you know, all these crazy corner cases that we need to look at. Thank you to Phil Koopman. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we know that. And also I, I showed you the, the bus that, with the snake around. It's not easy for the deep learning to, do, to have learned about that. But basically what we, we do say in the, in the standardization was that we have all possible scenarios and then we say, well, we have an ODD that we would like to design. And there is a lot of un unintended behavior. And we would like to minimize, take away more or less all the corner cases. How can we make sure that we don't have any remaining residual risk here in our design? Yeah, so we say that, of course, it's about unintended system behavior. We would like to find the cause for these false, false positives, that is, that we, we start to break. Because it's an ADA system, we don't want to have false breaking, because it's an obstacle, and you also can get quite injured if someone drives into you from behind. And also they are introducing something that is called the environmental uh, model. Uh, Predictions are not good enough. So there is some methodology and some testing needed, really. And that's what they have been working with quite a lot in defining. And there are strong partners. Bosch are there, for example, and Delphi, Active, now Olive. So we, there is potent and competent people, of course. But it's still emerging how we should look. And especially when we move to HAD, it's going to be more tricky and need a more thorough uh, approach. So this is basically the SOTIF machine and how, how, it, how you should look at the risk and how you should come to a, a good enough system. So you have the feature functional specification. You have your functional architecture known with interactions within the car. And then, of course, you make some risk identification and evaluation. And you think, do we think that the severity, S, and controllability of the env environment is, is this good? Yeah, then we can verify it as we have usually done. And the risk was accepted. Or if not, well, we need to see what are the hazardous events? What is the use case that we, we have identified? We need to do something. So we try to see if the concept itself can actually address it. If it cannot, we need to do functional improvements. We do need to reduce the risk. Maybe we need to lower the availability of the services. Maybe we are not allowing the ACC to work in that speed. Maybe we don't want to allow this short distance between cars, this time gap and things like that. So th this is the, the actual machine that has been voted on. And this is, I think it's a, it's a reasonable approach because we like to really minimize the risk of having false positives. But then it was sent on, on the comments. And it was a lot of comments, and, and not least from the Swedish. Everyone voted yes except Sweden. We said, no, it's too immature, this, this standard. So for example, uh, we need to the activities outlined here and complementary to those given in ISO 262. What, what with them? 
the examples provided in SOTIF are examples of hazard which are handled in the scope of ISO 262. So what is the new thing? What, what is the novelty, novelty of the, this standard? It was not clear. What is the real problem with ISO 262? So this is where we still struggle. It's a lot of valuable things in SOTIF, no question about that. We can look a lot uh, on some others. It is difficult, or in the middle, or impossible to distinguish the hazards as being SOTIF or, not, or ISO 262. So what is really the benefit of using it? Or how should you handle this? How should you distinguish things, right? Uh, do we then say that all hazard, all the ones that justify an ACL are managed by ISO? So there was a lot of questions that this, that are valid from senior uh, analyzers, designers. So, and I just took a, a few. So we, we do see that it was not a, a mature enough and it's a lot of comments. So what should we do about it? Yeah, so uh, the, the working group eight that is administering and conveying this standard said that we have a resolution now. Should we continue with the so TIF? So it's, if next week it needs to be voted on, we need to decide what should we do. And basically it says that is so TIF good enough? Can we build on this? I don't think the paradigm is the right, but I do think that we need guidance, but that's my personal view, right? So should become a further part of ISO 262, or should we have a new product for it that it becomes ISO 262? And what should be uh, the, the, the working description for this, this group? And it looks a little like this, draft schedule to continue with ISO 21448, that is the name. So we see that we are hoping to start it in March next year on the pass. The pass is what we have right now that you can download from SIS, if you like. You can see it, you can read it, you can comment it. So this is an ordinary schedule. But we, we foresee that there will be a lot of rethinking because SOTIF said that we would like to also address HAD. But since they are so fundamentally different with false positive, false negatives, we need to really be careful here because we would like to have something that is also commonly agreed and works from sensor providers up to OEMs. But in the best case, we will have an uh, SOTIF standard 2021 that is really in use by the companies. Okay, so we, then we can look at what is the real SOTIF. This is my view. <laughs> So AB true positive can be unsafe. So if you see a vulnerable road user and you break for it, you can get someone from behind. This is the safety of the intended function by definition, right? If someone hits you because you did something good or you have this in the crossing. But this is not addressed fully by the SOTIF. But post-impact breaking is really some, uh, an area where you need to in investigate if if it's safe enough, if the safety of the intended function is good enough. Question so far? Otherwise, we take them in the end. And I like to come into the trolley problem because I think it's tightly connected also to the so TIF principles. Is it anyone that haven't heard about the trolley problem? Ah, good. Then we are going to define it. <laughs> because in our community, working with this, it's it's... No, don't talk about the trolley problem. You have misunderstood anything, understood anything. So what is the trolley problem? We will start with that. So this is just some news article that are saying, well, who will you decide to kill with your self-driving cars? And it started actually when Elon Musk stood at the conference some years ago and said, well, we may have to choose between who to kill. And me and many others that were really working with this stuff, well, we haven't thought that. Should we give it some thorough thought? And we did, and we came up to the conclusion, no. And I will show you why this is not a problem for, for HID or AD, but for ADAS. So let's see. So the trolley problem is basically that you have a tram heading against, or towards rather, a lot of people, and you have the chance there. It's me, that's the designer now, that needs to say that, well, what am I going to kill? Should I pull the lever 
and then just kill one. Obviously, we would say, stop that tram. No, it's going so fast. You can't stop it. You need to choose. Well, they did go too fast in the, to begin with, right? So the, that is the real trolley problem that is now surfacing, not, not the least with uh, last week's uh, uh, or two weeks ago in the Svenska Dagbladet. So basically, if you do nothing, many persons will die. If you make an active choice, well, you save the money. So what do you think? Should, we, should you do something that really reduces this and chooses basically who to kill? Yeah, so if you read this article in Svenska Dagbladet, it was also once a new to a colleague of mine, Jonas Nilsson, he was also a co-author of this paper. He was interviewed, but they cut away a lot of, from his interview, unfortunately. And then they had a lot of philosophers who were really stringent and have done a lot of research. And I just took one example that they gave in the Svenska Dagbladet. So you're driving at high speed on a bridge, suddenly persons show up in the lane. In the other lane is one person. There is no time to brake but to steer. So it means that what should we do? Can, I mean, even if we don't choose with insinuity or the or near, maybe we will end up in this situation. Oh, we need to steer. And then we kill one just by de facto design. So the moral question, is this really applicable? Well, I would say it would be really bad if we had this thinking. Instead, of course, this is a serious fault that has occurred if this has happened. That's what we say. And we would like to just to, to, uh, look back on you as a driver. Uh, what are you doing when you come into a situation that you are not really feeling confident about? You, usually, if you are driven for many, many years, you know exactly this is a 70 kilometer and road. This is a 90. Well, this because of this and this, it's probably just a 40 kilometer road. And when you come on a bridge, are you going to ni a 90? If it's narrow, probably not. And if you don't see what's behind there, most experienced drivers would say, well, I remember this school teacher from the driving uh, school said, be careful about, you know, bridges and hills. So is it applicable for us? Yeah, so we say that the most important thing for us at Senuity is really to know the status, know yourself. And again, back to what we saw with the, 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 the sensors. We need to know what do we see, what can we expect, and on what distance, for example. Oops, I misjudged the situation. It was harder than I understood. Well, that is the reason behind a lot of accidents and fatal accidents in Sweden. But we have actually a car now that we think, we have designed it. If you believe Senuity, BMW, Mobileye, Waymo, etc., are excellent in their work, they can actually judge their own capability and should be doing it for any upcoming situation in that ODD, in that operational design domain, which is a statement. And also, we, we need to be modest. We need to be humble when we are driving, right? This is very important. We don't provide the first, the best, maximum power. It was NVIDIA talk the, early this year that they, in their test cars, they could actually switch on and say that you can go crazy. And of course, it is possible. But in that ODD, you basically have no margins in your operational capability. So again, you saw that previously we showed this. Uh, from passive safety to really putting you into a safe situation at all time. So we would always like to design for current capability. So again, this picture. So what we need to understand is, of course, where can we drive? Oops. Here we have tried to say that the red ones it needs to be really ensured. Of course, this is just a made up. It's fake. But it, it gives you the feeling that this must be ASIL D free. If we say there is no object there, it shall be so certain to, to the 10 to the minus 8 failures per hour. And then in the green, we don't really care if it's a vehicle there. It's good, but we, we can always hinder it. We can laterally avoid it. We can break fr for it. So it's no problem. Yeah, and that is what we call the tactical safety. 
So we say that the trolley problem is a myth. Instead, we need to under look at these questions. What if I will get surprised if something happens? I have an operational capability with, with the margins. Well, I have to take care of that. I'm not going to drive on the margins. Definitely not. So how sure can I be? We can take one example. So you're driving, and it's, it's nice weather. So you have one time gap to that car. It's very simple, of course. It's more and more sensors, of course. But it's 110. You have a certain uh, distance time gap to the car in front of you. You have no problem. You can actually um, be blind for maybe two seconds and then see that car again, even if it's pressed the brake hard. And then you will break and still survive. So, I mean, there is a lot of thinking and considerations that have been made. But that here, you see a little truck. And then it comes uh, water. It starts to rain. Now, we need to understand that rain is really bad when we are overtaken, especially from trucks. Have you experienced that you don't see anything when you take over a truck? Yeah, we have that. So we need to detect the rain with a very high confidence. And then, of course, we need to here have margins for something bad to happen. So we call, we are within the operational capability, but when we see a truck and it's raining, we need to do tactical decisions. So we, what do we do? We increase the time gap, maybe lower speed as well. Of course, we lower the speed, but the, the time gap needs to be maybe bigger in the end. So if we look at that, we have this again. We need to be sure in this area that there is no object. But this area, if we get rain, this will increase the ASIL D because we don't know. So we need, because of that, change. And here you see that this is actually a little bigger now. because <laughs> So we have changed a little with the operation capability, where we have the requirements on ACL, a, ACL D, ACL C, ACL B. It's a, it's a lot of thoughts to this. It takes some minutes to explain. But I'm wel you're welcome to come down, and we can talk about it. So, but what we need to, to look at, again, Start with limited tasks. We need to learn our systems, really, from the bottom, not coming up from the top. That's, that's not really responsible. We saw that, well, we can have a safety driver, but then we need to ask ourselves, is a safety driver something that is good enough? Obviously not. And there are many more examples than this sad history or event in Phoenix. So we need to introduce ODDs that we are certain can work. And because we know also that the sensors of today are not AC classified for, uh, uh, for detecting an object on longer distances. At not over, <laughs> überhaupt nicht. <laughs> what do you say? Överhuvudtaget. <laughs> yep. Sorry, that was Swedish for a while. Yeah, so we need to gather experience from simple cases. We use achieved knowledge in more complicated cases, and each step, step should be to have it on the safe side. And this is what we also need to look into in the next SOTIF, how this is done. And we think that this is uh, really uh, embraced by the Germans. We were down there two weeks ago, as I said, and BMW also says this is exactly how we're thinking. So that's good. But um, many other companies, they are having different strategies. That doesn't need to be unsafe, of course. But last or two weeks ago, I think the, the German uh, legislators look into Audi's and BMW's approach, where BMW's approach is more similar to what this is. Rather, Audi says that we go from the, from the top and go down. We start with the higher functionality. So it's two paradigms here again. Yeah, we need to iterate in steps, continuous integration, continuous deployment. And again, most valuable, uh, minimum vi viable product. We need to define that. And this is very important for seniority, to say the least, definitely. So we have no SOP contracts. That's in the fundamentals of seniority. We do have, we deliver working software for this ODD at all, thi all time. Yeah, so. Know yourself, adapt driving to current capability. Be sure not to overestimate this capability. We know that. And now, you see, this is what we aim for. 
Now it worked, right? I just forgot it. So there's where we need to aim. But it's possible. Of course, in the beginning, the car is just standing still. No fun. But it's definitely down here, then, of course. So we, we need to look at that. How long time will it take? Well, it's a, it's a question, right, about how serious you are about safety. Yeah, so it's about should I brake for a kid showing up when a truck of 50 tons is behind me? Well, for ADAS, this would be the trolley problem. And we would say that here you need to, uh, to select. So ADAS and trolley problem is correct. HAD and trolley problem is, is not correct to say. So if something says, well, who will you kill? Well, you can ask this to uh, Senut instead. So we just to make a distinguished trolley problem can happen in ADAS systems. But we, we're definitely not going to allow it to happen in HAD. If it happens, it's because it is a fault. And now I see the time is running, but um, it was a technical problem. But I will st uh, stop in time. We're just going to show you a little about the uh, uh, project that we have. It's called the Esplanade Project, which is KTH, or Royal Institute of Technology, is there. Deju, you can talk to him later on as well. And there's Volvo is there, of course. And we have one. Uh, <laughs> projects that we are looking into. Uh, so how far can I actually reliably detect uh, cars? Because this is the wish list. This is what we aim for. And as long as the driver is in control and you can set up other stringent constraints, it's going to allow you to, to maybe allow a certain functionality in this area. We, hold the, we have the TJP, the traffic jam pilot, for example, but the driver is still sort of in the loop and needs to be there for quite some time, we believe. And also, this is just to show you a little tricky from the signals to the end. It's a lot of uh, events that can go wrong. And this is to show you that depending on the, the, the crash impact, the violence that you experience, of course, you can find certain thresholds to, to look at. So you can say, well, at least we are removing the, the fatalities. We are removing the, the seriously damaged. But we may allow a broken bone or two, things like that. It's not because, but uh, we can decompose the system in such a way. That's just the point. Because it, it is tricky to have uh, images like this showing really bad sensor data and ensuring that you have an ACLD detection. Then you wouldn't work at all. But basically what we do, we look at the, uh, the road, we try to look at the detections, we try to look at the modalities of the sensor in the middle, and then we say, uh, try to also add this, what is the requirement from an AZ point of view? And here, just to show the, the confidence that we, we can give. For example, confidence three, we have an object confirmed, and the green is no object confirmed. We are certain with these sensors, but here we are not. Oh, it's bad here, in close by. We don't see it because of the hood or something like that. So, again, same picture. We need to, to know this operational capability. And only allow objects of specified type in the green area. So we need to be really good at, at detecting the different kind of types. Vulnerable root user, a kid, or that is there. It needs to be taken care of. So, again, we have looked in this project on failure to detect, false positive, false classification, failure to classify. Failure to classify is, of course, not good. Fail false classification, putting an, a can to a kid is not bad, but the opposite is. False positive, you do break, but it's actually, in the United States, it is like that. If you have a problem, you just break your car. It will always be the other's fault. Of course, you, you know, on the gravestone, it was he was always right. Doesn't help, right? But this is what we have been uh, looking at, failure to detect. So, and we have taken these uh, into account from the AIS. So for example, this is if you collide with something with a speed over 65, we can be it someone outside the car or you. It will be uh, an S3. It will be a high severity on it. So that's what we look at. So we have looked into the several speeds and what are the thresholds? When is this going to be uh, just a limp broken? Or when, it will, when will you be killed? Then we have looked into uh, the different areas and tried to really look into the weaker speed and the distance. 
of the car. So if a car is detected at 20 meters at that 60 kilometers per hour, and A still B impact has occurred, for example, that, that's what it will be. So we have looked into this, and we, we basically <laughs> saw that uh, from 12 meters and above, we don't really, we can't really have an ACL classification of objects. And that means that for the ODD, for the time being, for a uh, radar only, that is, is not going to be very good. For camera, a little better for some objects. But of course, so the conclusion is to use sensor fusion. And this, in this project, we do have, is it possible to have an ACL D sensor fusion? So again, this connects back to the SOTIF, and that's what we are working on now. So, whoops. Charlie problem is a challenge, only in ADAS, not in AD. ODD must be increased with increasing performance of sensors and AI learning. Sensor fusion is needed and should be based on different modalities. And then I couldn't read the first. But, uh, but of course, it's a huge definition work that we need to, to, to do for this. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Hokan. <laughs> so we have time for a question while we are doing the technical rearrangements. So let's see if we can bring the mic over here. Um, does it work? Yeah. Okay, so Yelena uh, Trubis uh, Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. And the question which I'm going to ask you is that you're talking about tactical safety. Mm. And uh, in a sense, the way I see your tactical safety is a very sort of uh, individual car centered safety. So do you think uh, doing strategic safety, thinking about the safety of the kind of multi-agent system would be a kind of next step. Yes, it is. Uh, so strategical safety is really, we could say that you have two options of driving. One that you know actually is a lot of traffic, one where it's a lot of bad sun and a lot of radar detection. So you choose another. And yes, that is part of, of the thinking, although the principles are not yet set. But uh, of course it's there. But then it takes other cloud services, of course, the, into account. Thank you. But okay. yeah, we met you at that meeting, yes. <laughs> so for further questions, grab yeah. Håkan at the coffee. Thank you, Håkan, very much. Yeah. Well,